Right, yeah, I got you, man. Hey, man, shout out to Grind City Hoops, man. Nine on one, Shelby Drive, look alive, look alive. Came up on this side, now they on the other. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Grind City Hoops. I'm your host, Donovan McLemore. Today, we got a special guest on the show. Um, please introduce yourself. What's up, y'all? My name is Lamine Conde. I'm from Montreal, Canada, and I play for College Montmorency. Absolutely. So, you know, everybody has a, you know, origin story about playing basketball. Um, some people learn from their parents, some from their peers. But, you know, what age did you start playing basketball when you were smaller? Uh, I started taking basketball seriously about around 13 years old. That's uh, when I met uh, you, uh, Pat, Pat, Pat the Rock. And, uh, you know, I just started from there. That's where I found I, I fell in love with the game out there. And, you know, from then... I've been grinding, you know, trying to get better every day. Absolutely. So did you find it difficult? Like, uh, was it a learning curve, like starting basketball later on? Like you say you started when you were 13. A lot of guys start when, you know, they're, you know, four or five years old. Did you find like a learning curve in the beginning? Yeah, it was it was really hard at first. Like <clears throat> a lot of guys that I was hooping with were better than me, you know, stronger than me, all of that. Like, you know, I, I wasn't really into sports and, and that stuff. So um, a lot of guys really had an edge on me when it came to, like, in-game situations. They had, like, you know, they had, like, the IQ when it came to basketball and all that stuff and I, that I didn't have. So, you know, I had to adapt myself real fast and, you know, try to learn from people that are better than me and try to, you know, get better. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, transitioning on, you know, basketball is a little bit different, you know, up there in Canada than it is in the States. So, you mm -hmm. know, down here we got AAU. Up there, you already got AAU too as well, right? Yeah, we got it too, yeah. All right, cool. So who will you be hooping with? And do y'all play solely in Canada or do you guys come down here to the States sometimes? Uh, I play for Red Rush. And, yeah, we come down to the States. Like, I've been to, like, uh, Pittsburgh. I've been to um, – I went down to um, New Jersey, New York. Like, we go all over the, the States. And um, – you know, it's a great experience, you know, get to get into play with like people from all over the the states and out there, you know, it's like a good competition, you know. Out here, like, yeah, it's competitive, but you know, out there, you know, the crowd get into it, you know what I'm saying? Everybody really into it. So yeah, yeah, it's nice out there. I like it there. Absolutely. I was about to actually ask you about that. So, you know, like obviously we just said basketball in Canada and you know, the states is a lot different, but you know, mm -hmm. do you did you have more fun playing down here or where you're from? You know, um, it, that's a hard question because, like, out here, you know, I got my family, got my friends and all that stuff, you know, to come in and cheer me on, you know, if I'm, you know, playing a good game, you know, it feels good to, like, you know, be proud of myself and stuff like that. But out there, you know, I feel like like it's more trash talking. It's more like people are really gritty, like niggas, like, you know, people, my bad, people are really like, you know, my, <laughs> people are really just – you know, trash talking in game, you know, you know, that's where you see like people really love the game out there. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. For sure. So now you you know, you train in Canada, obviously. You know, you've been to Pat the Rock. I don't know if you've been back ever since I seen you the last time, but you know, up in Canada, like where you be training at to like work on your game? Uh I be uh working out uh, at my school. So College Momonsi is what it's called. It's a French school. Mm -hmm. And uh that's what I be working at. I've been working there for like the past three years. Um, I be, sometimes I'll be seeing like my personal trainers and stuff like that, but you know, most of the time that's where I'd be at for sure. So, uh, transitioning on to you know, high school basketball, um, how did you how'd your high school career go? Um, and you could just take us through that, you know, just from start to finish, especially like with COVID and stuff like that, and how that mm -hmm. was an impact on everybody. So, you can just start from the beginning. So, basically, I started 13, so uh, I did I played um. My first, I think I played my first um, school basketball. Like I think I was like 15 when I started. Yeah. Like, like, like you know, like not just working out and stuff. Like really playing like in the team and stuff like that. So um, I was probably like 15, and then you know guys were still bigger. Like I was a real small, skinny, skinny kid. Like you know what I'm saying. So you were tall though. I was tall. Yeah, I was. I was pretty tall. Yeah, but like you know, I felt you know small like physically. I was tall, but like people were still pushing me around and stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard at the beginning for me. So what I had to do is, you know, I had to hit the red room a lot. I really had to, like, you know, focus up at a young age. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of kids don't really like hitting the red room and stuff, but I had no choice but to. Uh, yeah. And so uh, starting off, it was pretty hard. Like, you know, everybody was better than me and the team. Right. Like, the only reason I was there is because I was tall. You know what I'm saying? So right. you know, I, I really had to, you know, 
try to work like harder than everybody else. And by the end, like the end of my high school, so us, our high school would finish like a year earlier than y'all. Okay. So by the end, well, yeah. So we don't have a 12th grade. We finish at 11. Oh, all right. And then, yeah. So then, um, yeah. So by the end of my high school, I was probably, to me, I felt like I was the best person to play on the team. And, you know, I had to, that's when I had to you know, go find a good CJP. CJP is like another, that's like a junior college, but like we have to go through that out here. That's what we have to do. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, I had to good, find a good D1 uh, junior college for myself. And uh, season started off and I tore my meniscus. I, I, I ruptured my, my meniscus. So, it was really hard for me because, you know, all these years I was working so hard and it was finally going to be my MVP season, you know, for, you know what I'm saying? All-star, all of that shit. But, you know, yeah. it didn't end up working out for me. I couldn't play. I played like probably two games and then the third game, I, you know, I just I messed my thing up. So it was really hard for me. So um, I couldn't find a good CJ for me because, you know, they weren't looking at me because I wasn't playing. You know, it was hard. Uh, thankfully, I found a good coach. He was there for me. It was D2, but, you know, made it happen, went there, uh, worked hard every day. Uh, then COVID hit. So when COVID hit, that's, you know, I, I didn't have access to a gym. Right. You know, I, I don't know how it worked out there, but over here, like, if you play basketball, people don't care about you. Unless you play hockey or something like that, like, they're not going, you know. That's another thing, too. The culture out there is just different. Like, it's not a basketball, like, country at all. Uh, but right now. Thanks to like a lot of people that made it to the league and people that play pro and all that stuff. It's changing. It's starting, oh, yeah, it's changing. Slowly it's changing. It feels a lot better. You know, people, we got like a new um, professional league out here, like CBL. Oh. I don't even know about that. Yeah. 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 J. Cole played in there. You know, Kyrie Walker play out there right now. You know, a lot of players be playing out there. So, yeah, it feels pretty good. The culture is getting a lot better. But, yeah, but once COVID hit, um, it was really hard for me. Like, it was a struggle. Like, me and my coach, like, we was working out. When I tell you, 6 in the morning, we was going to parks in the snow. Where out here, when it's snow, it's snow for real, boy. Like, it's real snow. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's crazy snow out here. So, you know, working out in the snow. Like, we, he had, like, a garage thing. Like, for cars and stuff, he had, like, a garage. And he put in some, like, weights and stuff. That was our weight room. We went there every day. We could like I couldn't even hoop for real. Like all I had to do was you know weight, like weight training. You know, uh, calisthenics. We was doing calisthenics outside and stuff like that. And then once the snow started clearing up a bit, we brought out shovels, went to digging. We came digging, taking out the snow. You know what I'm saying? And we worked on our. You know, that's all we could do. Like every gym was closed. We couldn't go anywhere else. So that's basically what we, what I went through during uh, that year, COVID year. Then um, once that year passed. Uh, um, the first season that of my CJ uh, started, so then that went pretty good. I uh, no injuries. My my knee was feeling a lot better. You know, the season went really really well. We finished like I think we finished third that year or something like that. Uh, we we could have won the um, the the provincial, but we lost a lot of players during the year uh, because of grades, because of all the different type of stuff. But yeah, uh, then. Uh, my year was so good that I got moved up to Division One. Oh, nice! Uh, so, yeah, I moved up to a div Division One school. And then, well, it's the same school, but just the Division One team, right? right? So then, I, and the second I came into that team, you know, I had a great impact. Like guys was, you know, following my lead. Like you know, what I'm saying, so it felt really nice, and I knew all the guys already. So you know, it was it was really cool. So we started off, you know, we had two amazing games you know like we played the best basketball that we've ever played like because last year you know they were like i think they were like eighth or something right, right. In, in the league but then we we played uh summer we played all them things and uh against like uh prep schools and all that stuff and we was ranked seventh in canada we was ranked seventh best school in canada like basketball wise right then we started off the season we won our first two then on the third one, I fractured my wrist, my shooting hand. So, yeah, the third one, I fractured my wrist. So I was out for the rest of the year, basically. I didn't play uh, until the playoffs. 
Right. Yeah, I didn't play into the playoffs. And then even playoffs, like, you know, I'm still playing my, my bad hand. You know, it's my shooting hand, so I can't really do much. You know, I'm just out here grabbing rebounds, trying to feed guys. But, you know, I, 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 you can. yeah, I can't do what I once once could do. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, you know, I was still there every practice, cheering on my team, you know. Like, I was literally coaching at this point. Like, I was yelling out, cursing out people more than the coaches were, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just tried to try to do, do my best to be a leader that year, and you know, and yeah, that's that was this year, by the way. Yeah, so now um, all the plans that I had to go, you know, NCAA and all that stuff, you know, I asked a couple schools approach me, say that they were interested in the beginning of the year, but then you know, I got fra- I fractured my wrist, a lot of things went you know south a bit, and then you know I had to work for to find something else. So then I played my last year AAU, and um, you know, I hooped out, I balled out, you know, I got a lot of interest and offers from that. We played a uh, hoop group down in Pennsylvania, went to Indiana, uh, went to New Jersey, like I said earlier. And yeah, man, I balled out out there. It was a great opportunity. Saw a nice uh, group of guys, you know, uh, a lot of people that we played against, you know, we had a lot of multiple D1 uh, interests and offers and stuff like that. So it felt good to like, you know, be in the mix with them people and, you know, getting better and feel like, you know, you really belong. Because, you know, out here, like, you play people, but, you know, not a lot of people over here got D1 offers and stuff like that. If you go out there, there's a lot of more. Right. You say what? Well, it's not like down here. Yeah, it's not like down there. Down there, it's like, you got D1 offers. All right, okay, me too. Like, everybody got it out there, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, it felt good to play ball out, win against great teams. You know, we – I think we lost semifinals of the uh, of the hoop group thing. Like we went really far. We had like a great uh great group of guys, and you know, we balled out. So that's that's where we at right now. Um, about to go to uh, Vancouver next year, and you know, try to ball out, do my thing against some bigger, taller, bigger men. Pause that you know, I gotta play against and stuff like that. So sure. don't try and go from there. Definitely. So, I mean, obviously you had an up and down journey. I mean, you got injured twice at critical times in your high school career mm-hmm. where you could have like, you know, elevated and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And also you had COVID too. You know, obviously you had a lot of snow up there and stuff like that and just having to deal with, you know, all of the extra stuff that's not even a part of the game that you have to deal with. How did you stay like mentally locked in every time that you were getting better and then all of a sudden you had, you know, a flaw, like you had an injury? And then you had COVID and then you got better and then you had another injury. Like, how did you stay, you know, focused and just not give up? I feel like um, the reason I didn't stop is my why. Like every Hooper, when you play, you really want to make it far. You have to, you have to have a why. You have to have a reason that you're doing it. I remember we had Pat the Rock, you know, he was writing the, he was writing them write our dreams with how we going to achieve them, all that stuff. You know, I really met with the shit I wrote. I have a why. And my why was basically, you know, my little brother and my father, you know, because my father used to hoop and he got hurt and he had to stop because he was in that, down in Africa. And, you know, he had to start, you know, build a new world, like build a new life. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he had to quit basketball because of that. So uh, when he he signed me up to play some basketball, you know, he told me like, yo, you know, I always dreamed to playing pro. I always dreamed to doing this, doing that. But I couldn't. And. I, it would mean the world for me if you could, you know, could do it. Because, you know, if you if I can't do it, I'm going to do it through you. You know what I'm saying? That's basically what he told me. And my little brother, you know, he just started playing basketball and stuff. And he's really into it. Like, you could ask him 60, the 60th picks that, that got drafted last NBA. He know everybody is on it. Like, he's really into, like, he's a geek of basketball. You know what I'm saying? So, to have him look up to me, you know what I'm saying? You know, I can't just, you know, give up and just, you know, tell him that, oh, you know, nah, bro, you know. Right. I had to keep always, got, always got to keep pushing. Always, always, for sure. sure. So, you know, obviously you say you was going to college in Vancouver. How big of an adjustment is that going to be? I mean, I know that's nowhere near Montreal. That's on the other side of the, the whole like, country. So, you know, like, different culture. Like, how's that going to be, like, you know, just transitioning away from home? Hey, it's all about adapting, bro. I got to adapt. You know, it's – I'm there to hoop at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So as long as I got a basketball in my hands, if I play in China, I play in Spain, it really don't matter where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to, you know, try try and stay motivated, try and, you know, 
try and stay disciplined where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's really going to be hard. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but this shit is never easy. You know what I'm saying? Everything's hard. You got to really work for what you want. So, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. How's the weather over there? Is it cold like over there or like now? No, it's less cold actually in Vancouver. Than it's, it, it's, it, it'd be snowing too, but not as much as in Montreal where I'm from. Okay, so that's going to be a little step up. It's not going to be as cold, but it's still going to be cold. Yeah, it's still going to be cold though. Don't get <laughs> it. <laughs> it's still going to be cold. Canada going to be cold, like regardless. Yeah, but, um, yeah. you know, obviously you spoke on goals. This is going to be wrapping it up a little bit. You spoke on goals, you know, Pat the Rock Cam, write down our goals, our aspirations, what we're trying to do in the future. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you trying to do and where you see yourself going with this whole basketball thing? Hey, the dream is always the NBA. The dream is always to play pro. You know what I'm saying? You, there's no reason for somebody to stop dreaming high, like aiming high. You know what I'm saying? If, I heard this one quote that said, if somebody don't laugh at your dreams, you're not dream, dreaming big enough. You know what I'm saying? If you tell somebody you're your son, so you got to You got to dream big all the time. Never let yourself be – never pick the second option. Always aim for the first. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Ain't no plan B. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you coming on. This is the first international player we had on. You know what I'm saying? So, you shout know, out to you. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, I'm happy to be here, man. appreciate you for having me, man. Oh, for sure, man. You always got to rap uh, where Drake from, ain't it? Huh? You said what? Okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure, man. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you too, my guy.